What's going on guys, it's right here back to my channel and today, or tonight actually, we'll be doing a real review of Monday Night Raw on Valentine's Day. When I get this uploaded, it'll be the 15th, which is in the morning, so um, yeah, at 12 in the morning, so yeah, anyways, hope you guys had a good Valentine's Day and stuff, even though I hate the hol that holiday mostly, um, yeah, so anyways. My NRA was okay, but it was it felt like it wasn't much to say. I don't know, but because it's a the home thing for um elimination chamber this Saturday morning where I'm at, it'll start. So probably won't finish till like two o'clock or three somewhere because it lim the because of the elimination chamber matches and all that stuff. So um yeah. Yeah, this was the go home for Elimination Chamber show. So yeah. Anyways, let's get to it then. All right, the opening segment started with Bobby Lashley. Uh, so yeah, and the contenders for the um, Elimination Chamber match and all that stuff. So yeah. So here we go. Bobby Lashley and MVP opened the show with the promo talking about the upcoming Elimination Chamber match. For the WWE Championship as expected, they were soon joined by one of the challengers to give his re re retort. Sarah Rollins came out and compli complimented Lashley's outfit before putting over his own shiny suit. Will came out on a scooter wearing a toga to claim uh, to claim to claim he would win the the chamber match. Austin Jerry Austin Theory joined them to talk about the lessons he has learned from Vince McMahon. AJ Styles came out next and said his piece before last year verbally trashed everybody in the ring. That's when Lesnar finally made his presence felt. Theory tried to jump on Lesnar's back and overshot him so the Beast sent him flying with the German suplex before finishing him off with the F5. Yep, Austin Theory fucked up on that one. <laughs> so, yeah. Alright, the first match. This is the first uh, hour of Might Not Raw with the commercial free. So, yeah. Anyways. Alright, the first match. Dirty Dogs versus Street Profits. Montez Ford and Angela Dawkins. Angela Dawkins hyped up tonight's lineup before they went to the ring to battle Dolph Ziggler and Robert Root in tag team action. Tommaso Ciampa was was on commentary to check this out. After what happened between him and Ziggler last night, last Tuesday, Ford almost scored the win right, right away, but Rue broke up the pin and helped his partner take control. The show-off had the upper hand until Ford hit a, hit a kick to the, he to the head. Both men made the tag and Dawkins began taking it to Rue with a series of high impact moves. Rude planted him with a nice spine buster for a two count. Ziggler was distracted by Champa. Prop the Prophets finished off his partner for the win. Alright, the second match. AJ Styles versus Damian Priest. US title match. Alright, after squaring off last week, Priest and Styles met for a rematch with the US title on the line. On Monday show, they started off trading some stiff strikes that led to Priest taking control for a few moments. Styles made Styles dished out a little punishment before the Archer of inf Infamy hit him with the back with the backbreaker. The phenomenal one started to pick up some steam and hit a running forearm. Priest countered the Styles clash and slammed Styles on his chest. For a near fall, Styles hit the peel kick out of nowhere before sending Priest over the top rope with a clothesline. Priest sank him to the floor and kicked his legs out from beneath him. Priest was smart enough to avoid the phenomenal forearm before he rolled Styles up for the win. So yeah. All right, the third match: Almas versus Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. Because this was a short match. The U.S. title, it was like short. Alright, so third match. Almas versus Cedric Jenner and Shelton Benjamin. 
uh, Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin took on the Giant Almas in a handicap match. That still seemed unfair to the duo, despite having them, despite them having the numbers advantages. Almas easily pushed Alexander away at first, but Benjamin and Alexander tried to use some double team tactics to take over. Almas caught Alexander by the throat during the springboard and hit the two-handed chokes him for the win. Short match also. Alright, the fourth match, the uh, gauntlet match for the final spot in the Elimination Chamber. Alright, Rhea Ripley and Nikki Ash, trash, I should say, made their entrances, entrances right before a commercial break. So this is when somewhere they did a little commercials so the first couple minutes took place in the picture in picture window ripley seemed to control the pace through most of the break while nikki just tried to keep her distance and use her wrists to outsmart the powerhouse they screwed up a spot but quickly recovered so ripley could hit the rip tie for the win Liv morgan was next competitor to enter the match they waited until after another break to get started so Ripley had some time to recover. Morgan and Ripley had a competitive exchange, but Ripley was able to score the win with the Riptide to advance in the gauntlet. Her next opponent was Dewdrop. They locked up and struggled for her control until Dewdrop applied a headlock. Ripley did not go down when she hit when she was hit with a shoulder tackle, but she was able to take Dewdrop down with one. The two powerhouses each got in some good shots before Ripley had her finisher to defeat her. Third opponent, Bianca Belair, was the, f was the next entrant. Ripley looked worn out as they locked up for the first time. The EST was fresh and able to dominate through the commercial break, but Ripley was not going down with the out fight. They got several minutes for their section of the match. Ripley avoided the KOD and hit a missile dropping for a close two count. A few moments later, Belair successfully hit the KOD for the pin and the win. So, yeah. Alright, Alpha Academy versus Mysterios. Alright, here we go. Chad Gable gave a long promo about why the Mysterios are cheaters. Before he and Otis took on Ray and Dominic Mysterio in a tag team match, The Miz and Maurice joined the commentary team to check it out. The match got started during the commercial. We returned from a break to see Otis controlling Ray with his significant size and power advantage. Every time Ray tried to create some space, Gable or Otis would ground him with a submission or a slam. Dom finally got the tag and hit Gable with a series of quick moves. To knock him off balance. He hit a tornado DDT for a two count and taunted Gable a bit before hitting the three amigos. Gable countered the third suplex and hit his own for a near fall. Ray tagged back in and helped his son take out his take out Otis before he wiped out Gable with the suicide dive. He we returned from another break. I guess a lot of breaks here. To seeing Gable hitting Dom and with belly to belly suplexes left and right. The Olympian climbed up for a moonsault but had to land on his feet. When Dom moved when Dom moved Ray tagged in took Gable down with a head scissor. Ray and Dom drove Otis into the ring post before hitting Gable with the six one nine. Ray took out the miss while Dom hit a crossbody but Gable rolled Rolled it over, went to a pin. Alright, let's get to the main event. Randy Orton vs. Seth Rollins. The main event of the evening saw Orton take on the main the man he faced at WrestleMania 31. Rollins, they were slow to get going as the match started during a commercial break. When they finally locked up, Rollins played some mind games by ducking the Viper and dancing around the ring a bit. He did again, but Orton nailed him with the right hand this time. The visionary was able to get the upper hand and hit a running kick while 
Orton hung over the apron. The legend killer regained control and suplexed Rollins onto the announcer t- announce table. He set up for the rope hung DDT, but Rollins countered and dumped him over the top row. He hit a flying knee from the apron, followed by a suicide dive that sent Orton over the table. We returned to see Orton trip Rollins on the top turnbuckle. He climbed up with him and hit a massive suplex that put both men down hard. The Viper went went for his signature DT, but Rollins countered it again and hit a super kick for a near fall. Orton eventually managed to hit the DDT in an RKO, but before he made the cover, Alpha and Cammy started to come through ring. Riddle had tackled them from behind and Orton joined, joined him in in the aisle to fight when he got back in the ring. The visionary hit a stomp for the win. So Ar- Matty Orange should have won, but no, uh, Alpha Cammy came out and stuff, and yeah. So instead, Seth Rollins won the match. Yeah, and there was a little um, <clears throat> before uh, the eight o'clock where I am, where I'm at. They um, there was a promo with uh, Becky Lynch and Lita before th- the Saturday's uh, show for Elimination Chamber in Saudi. Um. Yeah, there was a contract thing for, you know, for the match and all that stuff. Yeah, it was okay. But, you know, we seen worse. But whatever. Sorry, I got me tired for any all that shit. Anyways, um, it was okay, but whatever. What are you going to do? It was, they don't know how to do whatever. They don't know how to make us happy, WWE. Only AEW does. So, yeah, anyways. <sighs> oh, there's one more thing before I go. Got a movie. So, yeah, Shang-Chi on Blu ray, Legend of the Rings. And the Legend of the Ring of the Ten Rings, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so. Pretty sure there's more better than reading Monday Night Raw every night. So yeah, we can sign. I was supposed to get this last year, but stupid got delayed and all that stuff. So yeah, look in the back. Blu-ray, deleted scenes, gag reel, family ties, building legacy, and audio commentary. So yeah, it comes with digital code. A lot of stuff, and just a it just the uh, regular Blu-ray disc, nothing special. So yeah. All right, that was it, and I see you all in the next video. Later's.